Hi, this is Holly of Holly Soap Making. In this video, I'll be making a modified version of a circling Taiwan swirl soap and also reviewing a new soap cutter I received from Custom Craft Tools called the Hercules Soap Cutting Station. If you're interested in the recipe I use, you'll find it at the end of the video where I enter it into a soap calculator. And I'll also show you how I determine the total amount of recipe oils I needed based on my mold size. Before I get started, just a quick reminder that soap making involves the use of sodium hydroxide, or lye, so be sure to follow lye-safe handling procedures during the entire soap making process, even while cleaning up. You can check out my safety section in the description box below for links to helpful posts and videos on lye safety and beginner soap making. A few weeks ago, Custom Craft Tools sent me their Hercules soap cutting station to try out and review. I've been really interested in these all-in-one cutting tools for a while and was thrilled to have the opportunity. So thank you so much to Custom Craft Tools for sending it to me. You'll find my affiliate link to their website in the description box below, along with a promo code that you can use in their shop for 5% off your entire order. The Hercules Soap Cutting Station is both a log splitter and a cutter all in one, and came with a portable cutting handle, a sliding pad, a ruler for measuring bars, and extra wires. I'll demonstrate the cutting station when I cut my soap later, but I wanted to mention that, like the other custom craft tool products I've received, I found it to be incredibly well made. The legs have rubber feet that keep the cutter securely in place, and it's made out of a material that's really easy to clean. You can quickly transform from cutting bars to loaf splitting by simply sliding the cutting arm under the base and then inserting the wire at the height you need. I'll go ahead and tell you that I really enjoyed using this soap cutter and found it extremely convenient and easy to use. I chose green, orange, and white as my color palette for this soap and wanted them to be a pastel shade so I only needed a little of each colorant. I mixed 1 quarter teaspoon green oxide with a small amount of sunflower oil. I continued mixing until it looked completely smooth. I measured out 1 half teaspoon of orange alac clay and added a small amount of water, just enough to get a really smooth consistency. And finally for the white, I dissolved 1 teaspoon of water-soluble titanium dioxide in 1 teaspoon warm water. After reaching an emulsion, I divided the soap into three equal parts. My camera cut off when I initially added the first three drops of green oxide, but I just continued to add two or three drops at a time until I reached my desired color. If 
For the orange soap, I did the same thing, adding two or three drops at a time until I achieved a pastel orange color. For the white soap, I used one half teaspoon of the titanium dioxide per cup of soap. I like to blend the titanium dioxide into a small amount of soap first. This allows me to blend it really well without accelerating trace in the entire cup of soap. As you'll see in a moment, this was a circling Taiwan swirl, but at the end I decided to modify it a bit by running my swirling tool down the middle. I first saw Elaine of Misty Springs Bath & Body do this swirl years ago, and more recently SNIF Natural Soap Making also made a soap using this method. Both of their soaps are really beautiful, and I'll be sure to link their videos in the description box below in case you'd like to check them out. I did oven process the soap to make sure it went through gel phase so the colors would be more vibrant. I removed the soap from the oven the next morning and left it covered on the counter for three more days. I would have cut it sooner, but there was some construction going on in my shop, so I had to wait a few days.
The top of the soap was slightly uneven, so I decided to take a thin layer off the top. That soap won't go to waste though, because I'll be using that piece for samples or maybe in a confetti soap of some kind. Overall, I really liked using the Hercules soap cutting station. It was super easy to use and I especially liked the quick setup for splitting a loaf or just planing a little off the top. Thank you again to Custom Craft Tools for sending me this cutting station. I really appreciate it and plan on getting a lot of use out of it in the future. I've been asked how I calculate the total oil weight for my recipes, so I thought I'd show that to you here. You first calculate the volume of your mold, and then you multiply that number by 0.4. This will give you the weight of oils in ounces. You then convert that number to grams if needed. This actually converted to 893 grams, but I usually round up a bit. Since this was a cold process soap, I made sure the top of lye was set to sodium hydroxide or NaOH. My recipe oil weight was 900 grams. My lye concentration was 35%, which means my lye solution consisted of 35% sodium hydroxide and 65% water. I left the super fat at 5% and my fragrance usage rate was 40 grams per kilogram. This recipe does contain lard, so I'll list an extra lard-free recipe I really like following this one. Once you have everything entered, you just select to calculate the recipe, then to view or print it. SoapCalc will give you a really nice listing of all of your ingredients, including the amount of sodium hydroxide required to saponify your oils. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you found something useful here to help you in your soap making.